on. Okay. We got Angel of Soulmate. That's so funny that you said that today, too. Uh, hi, everybody! That is the Radicals of Love. It is Freaky Friday! Yes, this is Mecca. Make everyone count always. We are a support network for radical self love and self care with focused attention on our caregivers and care receivers when our community's most vulnerable feel supported and valued. We all can rest assured we are supported and valued as well. I'm going to shut that off. Yes, do not disturb. So, Freaky Friday, be your full actualized self, right? Creative consciousness, conscious creators. So, this week I had a lot of fun making creations. I made this. Isn't it cute? I love patches. I love them. I love it. I love it. I love it. They're all over, but. Uh-huh. Um, and I did some painting because I have had a stressful week. So after, yes, Wednesday's vlog, um, when I was going to do our meditation for Third Eye, I got a migraine and I believe that I was talking about going through some things that were basically not appropriate to talk about on um, here, but basically that issue snowballed and well, before that, I just got the migraine um, after, so the day after, and then because my body mm -hmm, responds to stress quickly, and so I just focused on doing self-care, doing some creative work and tub time and whatnot, and then, um, yeah, I haven't really had a lot of energy or felt completely fully well since. <laughs> um, and then last night when I was um, dealing with my child, things went in a not a good direction. Although, I mean, I don't know how much more basically I can do with my foster child, I guess, um, to help the situation. And there's really not a lot of support since it's not mandatory that, you know, that there's therapy involved. So um, I think that makes it difficult because most kids are coming from traumatic uh, circumstances. And I know personally, I can speak for myself since I was in a foster home. I am an effing awesome child, as well as an effing awesome parent. So I know 100% if I would not have received the therapy I did then, I would not have um, definitely not been the same person, definitely not have made it through the trials uh, that I did, and not that I always made it through as successfully as I had hoped, but um, I know when I was in therapy, it helped, you know, situational at least, and um, I don't know, I just kind of think it should be a mandatory thing. If, if you're in a foster home, you should be getting therapy. The family should be getting therapy. We should be getting therapy together to work on our relationship and communication. Just saying. It should be mandatory. <clears throat> so, 
I know we don't want to make our children do anything they don't want to now. So for today's card, oh yes, thank you all to our new subscribers and thank you all to our family who are with us all the time. Thank you for your love and support, your likes and comments and shares and subscriptions and donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm hmm. So, Tabby Maloon, we got angel number 30, angel of soulmate. Yeah, it's kind of cool because um, the conscious queen and I were just seeing how we were soulmates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I'm so happy I get to go on vacation tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, universe, for knowing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Reset. <laughs> so, Angel of Soulmates, 30. You are a being of the universe who is present on the earth at this time to share your love and light with your soulmate. You have received this card because your angel of soulmates wants you to know that your soulmate is on their way. As spiritual beings, we all deserve to have the opportunity to share our love and life with another. Love can come in many different forms, including the love of our parents, family members, and friends. It isn't until our true soulmate arrives that we begin to truly understand the depth of sharing our love with them. Angels understand how important it is to connect with your soulmate. The most important thing your angels want you to remember is to be patient. Angels don't function within the re restrictions of human time. Your angel of soulmates is working in the spirit realm to orchestrate the divine timing for you to meet and assist in both your soul's growth. Soulmates have lived previous lives and it is likely you have met your soulmate in the past. Have you dreamed about what your soulmate looks like? Do you have memories of a relationship from your past life? These experiences can be glimpses of the life and love that you experienced the last time you met. A soulmate will stir your emotions within you to your very to your your very soul. You will know without a doubt when they arrive. The connection is instant and you cannot deny their energy. You will feel comfortable and communication will be effortless. You have the same hopes, dreams, and aspirations in life. Now is the time to surrender and release any fears to your angel of soulmates. Remember, soulmates can come in many forms as friends, family members, or even acquaintances. The person may be here to teach you how to let go of past issues or help you find out what your true life's purpose is. A soulmate can come into your life to help you grow and develop your consciousness on a spiritual level. They can help you to clear any karmic debts or lessons from the past so that you don't carry them with you into your future life. Affirmation. I am open to connecting with my soulmate to ignite the love and light I have within me. And I know that definitely when we're working on our um, chakras, if you're doing the chakras, chakra healing, that also will help you to release, right? Blockages, um, walk and roll away Wednesday, we release blockages. So release and receive, open hands. It's hard saying that when I'm not gonna cry. I'm not doing it. It's eerie season. <laughs> it's about starting over, right? Um, new life, new year. 
we must release things sometimes even. When we're not ready. So, we're going back with my boyfriend since I messed, since we missed yesterday's self-transcendence and since self-actualization, Freaky Friday, is on the way up to self-transcendence, we can combine them with our friend Maslow, my boyfriend. So, sorry. I'm fine. Remember, I'll be in Cancun tomorrow. Don't feel bad for me. <laughs> the cat just queen is like, <laughs> so funny. Obviously, the universe knew I was going to need this trip right now. I need a break before I have a, you know, break now. Let's begin. It's going to be short and sweet. All right. I'm starting from where we left off. So toward a psychology of being, right? Abraham Maslow. We're on page 17. My nose is starting to run too. I won't cry again. <laughs> Although I already read this little part and it's like amazing how right on it is with what I'm going through, but at the same time, I'm like, eh. <laughs> well, you'll see why, because it's like, when you're dealing with teenagers or kids in general, you know, it's like, I don't know, how far, how far do you go? What do you, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it when I'm done. So, <clears throat> in essence, I am deliberately rejecting our present easy distinction between sickness and health. At least as far as surface symptoms are concerned, does sickness mean having symptoms? I maintain now that sickness might, be, might consist of not having symptoms when you should. Does health mean being symptom free? I deny it. Which of the Nazis at Auschwitz or Deutsch were healthy? Deutsch? How do you say it? D A C H A U. Pause. Gotcha. I don't know. D-A-C-H-A-U. I love when the conscious queen is home. Yes, also, since we're that's waiting. How. That's how. That doesn't sound normal. Forget it. We'll talk about it after. That's how, I think. Anyway. Which of the Nazis at Auschwitz or Dachau were healthy? Those were those with stricken conscience or those with a nice, clear, happy conscience? Was it possible for a profoundly human person not to feel conflict, suffering, depression, rage, etc.? In a word, if you tell me you have a personality problem, I am not certain until I know you better whether to say good or I'm sorry. It depends on the reason. And these, it seems, may be bad reasons or they may be good reasons. An example is the changing attitude of psychologists towards popularity, towards adjustment, even towards delinqu delinquency. Popular with whom? Perhaps it is better for a youngster to be unpopular with the neighboring snobs or with the local country club set. Adjusted to what? To a bad culture? 
to a dominating parent. See, this is what I'm talking about. What shall we think of a well-adjusted slave? A well-adjusted prisoner? Even the behavior problem boy is being looked upon with new tolerance. Why is he delinquent? Most often, it is for sick reasons, but occasionally it is for good reasons, and the boy is simply resisting exploitation, domination, neglect, contempt, and trampling upon. Clearly, what will be called personality problems depends on who is doing the calling. Sorry, I'm fucking it up. I know, I know. <laughs> There's definitely something wrong with me. I know, I know. This is just what happens, because if I hold it in, then it just makes me sick. So you guys just have to deal with it. Clearly what will be called personality problems depends on who is doing the calling. The slave owner, the dictator, the patriarchal father, the husband who wants his wife to remain a child. Why we doing know that, don't we? <laughs> it seems quite clear that personality problems may sometimes be loud protests against the crushing of one's psychological bones of one's true inner nature. What is sick then is not to protest while this crime is being committed. And I am sorry to report my impression that most people do not protest under such treatment. They take it and pay years later in neurotic and psychosomatic symptoms of various kinds, or perhaps in some cases, never become aware that they are sick, that they have missed true happiness, true fulfillment of promise, a rich emotional life, and a serene, fruitful old age, that they have never known how wonderful it is to be creative, to re react aesthetically, to find life thrilling. The question of desirable grief and pain or the necessity for it must also be faced. Is growth and self-fulfillment possible at all without pain and grief and sorrow and turmoil? If these are to some extent, extent necessary and unavoidable, then to what extent? If grief and pain are sometimes necessary for growth of the person, then we must learn not to protect people from them automatically as if they were always bad. Sometimes they may be good and desirable in view of the ultimate good consequences. Not allowing people to go through their pain and protecting them from it may turn out to be a kind of overprotection, which in turn implies a certain lack of respect for the integrity and the intrinsic nature and the future development of the individual. So, <clears throat> you know, if you've been listening for a while, obviously you know that uh, my feelings on my uh, past relationship <laughs> were included in here. Um, 
Um, and that's really, I guess, how I got here by, you know, pushing through, pushing through it. But it was definitely hard to see the problem sometimes because it seemed like it was such a good life at the same time. So, you know, it was almost like my mind was constantly playing tricks on me. And uh, I don't think only for me either. I think it was like <clears throat> familial. So maybe even with my um, ex-partner as well, you know, maybe he was going back and forth too, trying to figure it out. Um, but I mean, it's definitely both sides when we're talking about on the one hand, letting people go through the suffering, <laughs> you know, um, that they need to, especially as a parent. And then, you know, like, I guess as a foster parent, not being able to really be a parent. So you can't really make the guidelines that you need to, or you don't really have the full, you know, guardianship, I guess, of a foster child at times to be able to, they can manipulate situations if they need to, or, you know, do whatever they need to to escape and not deal with the actual issues itself, which obviously isn't going to help them. And, you know, there's really only so much you can do from, I guess it would say either way. I mean, whether you're a parent or a foster parent or whatnot. Um, And just hope <laughs> that they'll come to a realization, right? Um, a realization that you care. But then again, I'm like, <laughs> looking at it here, it's like, It depends on who is doing the calling, you know, like, is he seeing or, you know, is he seeing me as, is he seeing himself as simply resisting exploitation, domination, neglect, contempt, and trampling upon? Is that how he really feels? Um, or does he know better, you know, and it's just he's going through other stuff right now, so... I don't know, but I will think about it in Cancun. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to leave it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let it go and let the universe decide whatever happens, happens. And yes. Release. That's what I'm going to do. So I am going to um, do some meditations out there and um, I'm not going to do the sound healing tonight. I, I think I'll decide later, but I think I'm just going to do our Patreon meditation and that's it for tonight. So, I hope you guys are all being your Freaky Friday selves and making some conscious creations. Yes, I do. I would love to see them or hear about them and know what you're working on. Um, 
yeah. So I love you all so much. Um, see you up at the ocean. Whether it's tomorrow, well, no, it won't be tomorrow. It will definitely be on Monday if I'm able to actually send them. So, yeah. Love you all so much. Thank you so much for your support. I am so grateful. So, have a wonderful Friday. Oneness. Mm -hmm.